A couple weeks ago, I just put out a review about the Glowforge. And there's actually a comment on that video that I thought we should get into. So we're asking, I think most people watching this are thinking about whether to get a Glowforge or save money on a K40. Would love to see a little more attention on an apples to apples comparison. That is what we're gonna do in this video. So we're gonna take a cheap K40 laser, upgrade it as much as we can, and then compare it to the Glowforge. We're gonna see how the features line up and especially see if it's worth it on the price. So the first thing we need to talk about is the most obvious and that is the actual laser. So you can pretty much find these style lasers all over the place, whether they're on Amazon or on eBay. We usually call them K40. And actually last year, Ohm Tech, I think bought Orion Motor Tech and started providing them on the United States side of things. I have always recommended them because they also provide some support. Plus I am an affiliate if you guys go through here, but you guys totally don't have to. So we're gonna take a around $500 price point for those. And we're gonna put that in for the actual laser itself. Now this is compared to the Glow and there are actually three different versions. I actually reviewed the top end, the pro, but we're gonna be talking about the basic. And the basic is 3,000 bucks. So we've got about $2,500 that we can work with in terms of upgrades. All right, so now let's actually upgrade our machine. Now, before we get into all of these, a huge disclaimer here right off the bat, definitely do your research before you start messing around with any of the electronics, because you're not just dealing with kind of your standard electronic stuff. This is some pretty strong stuff, especially when you start playing around with the power supply for the laser itself. So with that being said, the very first thing we actually are going to do is safety. So there's a couple things we're going to add. The first is going to be a current meter. And so basically, this is going to give you the ability to actually see the current that is running through your laser. So on the K40, you actually have just a little dial on the actual control panel that you turn that controls the power, but an actual current meter will give you an idea of the true power that's going through the machine. Now this is compared to the Glowforge, which again is generic numbers, but because so many people have that unit and they've done so much testing, you usually can use the numbers that they give you when you're looking at different materials. Then next up on safety is going to be a limit switch. Now the whole idea behind this is there's really no cutoffs on the K40 in terms of like, if you open up the lid, the laser is just gonna keep firing. That's actually how I got a lot of the video because I could open up the lid and record it, but that is definitely not safe. Most of the higher end CO2 lasers have some type of kill switch on the lid. So when you open it up, it's gonna trigger a switch and it's gonna kill the laser. Now, this is just the beginning of what you're gonna have to do, but you're gonna have to get some type of limit switch like this, and you're gonna have to wire it in into the control system. We won't go deep into what that actually looks like, but just know there'll be a little bit of an expense with that. That's only like a few bucks. Okay, next up, this is an upgrade you pretty much need to to do if you're gonna be using one of these machines more than just a tiny, tiny bit. And that's adding some type of air assist to the machine. And all the air assist is really doing is adding a compressed stream of air to blow away any soot and any dust, but also be putting out any flare ups that are gonna be happening as you're engraving material, especially flammable stuff like wood. And that's something the Glowforge just has. Now there's a couple different ways to do this, but actually the most effective one I've seen is basically taking like a little copper tube and putting it right at the point where the laser is coming out. So it's hitting the material and that tube is hooked up to some tubing and then going into a air compressor. So you can attach the tubing to some type of air hose. This is just a cheap one off of a master car. And then you're gonna need some type of air pump. Again, these are pretty cheap compressors. You can get them cheaper. Um, these are designed for aquariums for the most part. Now again, you'll have to do some like custom brackets. You might need to 3D print some stuff to be able to get everything to attach and look right. All right, next up is going to be the actual laser itself, or I guess the laser beam. A couple things we're gonna do is you're gonna want to add some more lenses. Um, depending on if you make modifications to your laser nozzle, um, the diameter of your actual lens is gonna change. So you'll need to get some new ones, um, but you will probably wanna upgrade and get some new ones anyway. And so I put about 30 bucks for that. And then the mirrors as well, you'll want to upgrade or add new ones to as you're going. And those are gonna be about 30 bucks. Now next up is the big one. And this is the one that's gonna cost the most money. And that's the actual brains of the machine. Again, this is running off a pretty simple control board and all of the actual laser power controls are on the board itself. And so it's super manual. So you don't have any way inside of software to control like the power of the laser, which is something pretty much any other CO2 laser that is in the K40 is gonna be able to do for you. So the easy but most powerful way, but also the most expensive way is to add a new control board. And I'm gonna go with Cohesion 3D. 
D. They do a great job allowing you to basically retrofit the K40 and turn it into a nicer Gerbil supported machine. Now, the big thing about that is that is going to let you use Lightburn. Big thing with Lightburn is it's way more powerful, but then you can control the laser power directly within the software, which lets you do a lot more things. And that's obviously something that Glowforge has directly built in. Now, Cohesion 3D is 220 and Lightburn is 40 bucks. You don't have to pay the 40 bucks if you don't want to for Lightburn. You can use some things like Laser Gerbil that will kind of get you the same place. But another nice part about Lightburn is they have integrations for cameras because probably the biggest feature on the Glowforge when it's first coming out was this integrated cameras. So you could actually place things and see where it was gonna go on your material once it was in your work bin. Now we're actually gonna add in the camera mount because you can buy it directly from them. You can see the camera is about 80 bucks and then you can get an upgraded one for 110 if you want. And then the mount is about 30 bucks depending on your field of view. So all of those electronics put together, we're looking at 370 bucks. So we're actually getting pretty close to the full price of the entire laser itself, but you really have upgraded a lot of the internals and it's a much, much more powerful machine. Okay, next up is going to be the actual work bed. So the work bed that comes stock with the K40 isn't that great. It's just little slats. And a lot of people modify this right off the bat because you also get a lot more work area once you do that. Now, the big thing is you're gonna want to add a honeycomb bed. This is what comes on most bigger lasers as well as the Glowforge. What's great about this is any of like the small dust and materials will just drop right through that honeycomb. And actually the airflow is way better too because it can actually move around your material through the honeycomb. Now, one thing we're not gonna be able to upgrade completely with this unit is the ability for automatic focus. So the Glowforge will automatically focus on your material because it actually has a camera in the little laser head. And so it can sense how far it is above and then it will automatically adjust it. Now, when you go to a manual laser, you'll either adjust the laser head or you'll actually adjust the material itself. So for us, we are actually going to be getting a bed jack, which I guess you use them in like a laboratory setting. Um, but for us, you could put the honeycomb bed on top of this. You'd have to modify it a little bit and then you'd have the ability to raise or lower your work bed. And that would allow you to get focus on different types of material. Okay, next up is going to be exhaust. Currently, the exhaust isn't super great. It's almost like a low powered computer fan that's on the back. You'll need some type of flexible ducking so you can get all of that exhaust out of your work area. So most of the time that's included with the machine, but if not, we're gonna just go ahead and add it here and it's gonna be like 13 bucks. But then the big thing is we wanna actually give the exhaust more power. So we're gonna put a fan in line of the exhaust. So basically it's gonna go out of the machine, it's gonna go into this exhaust fan, and then it's gonna go out more tubing out of your workshop. So this is gonna make it way more powerful. You're gonna be able to pull out more fumes and dust and you're gonna be in a way better position than what you were before. Now with the exhaust in general, you probably are gonna have to modify the actual duct itself so that you kind of get it turning at the right angle. Some people have printed 3D printed brackets to do this. You could also do this with some modified PVC. I didn't actually put that as a cost in here, but just know you're gonna need to do some modifications with the exhaust as well. All right, and last but not least, we are going to add a water cooler. Now the cooler is gonna be in quotes here because we're gonna be talking about a cooler that you can get directly from Ohmtech. And this is nine liters. This is actually the CW3000, which you could probably pick up a little bit cheaper if you wanted to. But basically all this is, is a big water reservoir with a pump and a radiator. And that's gonna help keep the temperature down. Now you could actually upgrade this and get something nicer. And so this one is an actual water chiller. Uh, and so it has some refrigeration inside of it. So it will keep the water temperature down, but it's also a good bit more expensive versus the 140, 150 that it is for this guy. Now this upgrade isn't totally required because you will get an aquarium pump. Most of the times when you get a 40 watt unit, you'll still need to buy some type of reservoir or some little box to put the pump inside of. I just added the actual integrated cooler because with the Glowforge, all of that is internal as well as the actual air compressor for the air assist. That's just one nice enclosed system. So going this cooler route were probably a little bit more expensive than what you really need. Um, it gets us a little bit closer to what the Glowforge can actually do. These are all of our costs, which gives us a grand total of $1,239. Versus the Glowforge, which is $2,999, gives us a difference of 1,760 bucks. So 3,000 for the Glowforge, and let's say about 1,300 for an upgraded K40. Is it 
worth it. Again, that all depends on your situation. Now I'm trying to get them as close as that apples versus apples comparison, but there's still some pretty big differences. And the main one is the actual size of the K40. Depending on how you modify the work bed, you're gonna get up to probably around a 12 inch by eight inch work area. Now let's compare it to an 18 by 20 work area on the Glowforge. So if you need material that's ever bigger than 12 inches, or you wanna do something that's like a 12 by 12 inch square, then you're gonna be out of luck on the K40 side. And then on the software, Lightburn is amazing, but you'll still need to connect it directly to a computer. Glowforge's software is all Wi-Fi, which for a lot of people that might be a detractor versus an advantage, but depending on your situation, you could go either way. And then the other big feature would be the actual autofocus. But the biggest thing when looking at this is gonna be your comfort level, as well as how much time you wanna put into this. Because these upgrades are gonna take a little bit of time, especially if you've never done something like this before. So you're gonna have to solder stuff. You're gonna have to buy or custom make brackets out of hardware or even 3D print it. So is the tinkering and the time worth that extra like 1700 bucks for you? That's something you're gonna have to decide. Now looking at this, I think the more interesting comparison isn't the actual Glowforge, but a larger unit from Ohmtech. So instead of the 40 watt, let's actually jump up to a mid-range CO2 laser and then look at this manual focus 50 watt. So basically all of those upgrades that we just did to the K40 kind of turn it into a 50 watt unit, except the 50 watt unit has a stronger laser tube and it also has a bigger work area. This is about 11 by 20. And then you can see actually the maximum Z axis is really big with nine inches. And probably the biggest thing about this is that it comes with a Ruida digital controller. And so this is something that works just right out of the box with Lightburn. This is actually nicer than what you would get with Cohesion 3D. So if we go the 50 watt and that was around 1900 bucks, then we're looking at a difference of about $1,100. So then you're saving what, about 600 bucks off of the Glowforge. And then you're gonna get a machine that is very, very comparable to potentially what the Glowforge could do. Now you might be wondering what is kind of that next level even after a 50 watt unit, like a different brand. One I would suggest would be Aeon and they are a Chinese importer as well, except their machines tend to be a little bit nicer than what Ohmtech does. And they're also a good bit more expensive. So if it was up to you, what would you actually buy? I would love to know down in the comments. Now I have done some hands-on reviews of some of those units and I put a playlist together right there so you can dive directly into it. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Also, if you're still here at the end of the video, I'm gonna assume that you like this channel or at least you've liked this video. I would love to know what you guys think of this format. I know this is a lot different than me in the shop. So let me know about that as well in the comments. All right, see you guys.